everyone and welcome back to a new plan with me video if this is your first video here hi my name is Cherise, and today it's time to set up our november bullet journal spreads i've been meaning to do a cozy autumn theme since the season started so that is what we're incorporating in this whole november setup so we're starting right away with the cover page and as always there will be painted illustrations to decorate my spreads but you can of course use your preferred mediums or supplies if you would like to create a theme like this. After a good use of watercolors last month, I'm back to using gouache from Royal Talents this time and I will also try to provide the colors I use on the screen and all the materials I use on the video description. One of my favorite cozy things to do is burning scented candles and that is what I wanted to paint for the cover. But I'm doing a little twist with this illustration so instead of painting the candle wax inside, I decided to paint a cabin in the woods. I started painting the sky background and the glass jar first. I also quickly showed in the beginning how I mixed the colors I used for the sky background and then I outlined the jar with a gray mixture. With the same gray color, I painted the contour on both shoulders of the jar with curvy strokes to emphasize the cylindrical shape of it as well as adding shadows to the sides of the rim, neck, and body. You can also see me leaving some white areas on top because those will be the highlights and the smoke from the cabin's chimney later on. Next, I am painting several trees behind the cabin. I'm working mostly with a small or detailed brush for this and it's really helpful to get those thin details. I just did triangular trees. You can start by drawing a vertical line to mark the trunks and then with thin strokes from the top, work your way down in zigzag motion and then making the shape wider on the bottom. I'm using two colors for the base, dark green and yellow, but I realized that I should have used the rusty red for the base instead, and then use the yellow for some highlights. They don't have to be very structured, but we can add a bit of life to the trees by adding those little highlights by using lighter thin strokes of color on top. I think this is an easy way to paint trees and since we're painting a line of trees, you can also vary the heights and making the ones on the back or farther away shorter to make it look more interesting. I was deciding for a while on what color to use for the roof and I ended up going for a dark red. And then I just added a bit of yellow ochre to the gray mixture we used earlier to make it a bit warmer. And with that, I painted the body of the cabin. And then the yellow ochre again for the windows and door. And lastly are the details with dark brown. I painted one more tree on the front with the same steps as we did on the back. Now for the smoke, I made a very light and watery consistency of the green, yellow, and cream paint just like watercolors and just gently tapping the brush on the area. And then I went back to add more highlights to the jar with white. And we will finish the smoke on top of the jar later, but for now, let's paint the rest of the composition. So this is a whole picture of someone 
wearing a cozy sweater with both hands holding the jar and if you feel like there are too many elements in this painting already you can continue to the bottom of the jar and paint some grasses and there you have your cover page but i thought it needs to have another background for the smoke on top to be nicely seen so i hope you can still watch me paint the rest of it so now I moved on to the hands. I started painting them with a solid skin tone color. I added a bit more of burnt sienna and yellow ochre to the cream mixture from the jar painting to get a darker shade. And since I didn't want to miss the sketch underneath because of the opacity of the paint, I left a bit of white spaces to separate the fingers as well as the nails. In my sketchbook, I tried drawing with a fine liner first before painting with gouache and it really helped somehow to see the whole composition but I wasn't able to perform it here so if you are practicing with gouache, I think that step would be helpful to you as well. And then I painted the nails with green but I changed my mind in the end with a terracotta color instead. Anyway, after that, I continued to build up the skin by adding the shadows and details with dark brown. It still looked pale at this point, so I added a bit of black to the brown mixture and went back to intensify the shadows. The last thing to paint in here is the sweater. I went for gray again and I wanted the candle or the jar with the cabin to be the eye-catching point in this illustration so I didn't go for something colorful for the sweater. This part required a lot of paint to be honest for this specific color and I ran out at some point so I recommend preparing the amount you need that can cover the entire thing beforehand. After that, we are adding dimension to it, so I'm painting the darker areas just on the sides and trying to blend them and smooth it out as much as possible. You can also notice that I like to change brushes from time to time depending on the area and I remembered getting some filbert brushes. These are like flat brushes with round edges. So for this purpose, this brush definitely made the process much much easier instead of using a flat brush with straight edges since there are curvy lines or corners that I didn't want to disturb. There are still some streaky texture visible to it but I kinda like how it looks. So now we are painting the final detail which are a bunch of lines for the sweater pattern. I wanted to go for a semi-realistic knitted pattern but I didn't have time for that anymore so I think these will do. As we paint them, notice that the lines go a little curvy towards the arms. I'm using the dark brown on the sides but I went a bit lighter on the middle. I also did the same thing to the arms. I painted curved lines to emphasize the folds or wrinkles. Like I said, I changed the nail color here with an orangey color and I think it looked much better. 
Now the smoke on top shows up really well, but I still painted that with faint swirls of white around. And that finishes this whole painting, and to complete this cover page is a November title. I decided to print out some fall colors, and I'm using this piece of shade of green and ripped some of it glue them on the top and bottom of the page, slightly covering the edges of the painting. I really like how it gave a nice texture to the frame, but on the bottom, I'm writing the November title in a slab serif font using a black pen. It wasn't as straight and even as I wanted, but that's okay, and that's finally it for my November cover page. I think the idea of changing the inside of the candle on a jar with a cabin and trees around is really fun. I won't be doing something on the other side of the spread for now. It's usually a quote page, but I will be adding that somewhere in the setup. So let's flip right away to the next spread and create my calendar page. I'm going for a simple calendar layout. I'm using the Saddle Brown Tombow brush pen to draw a thick line for the background of the days of the week. And then the rows with a black fine liner. I think making mistakes in my calendar has become a tradition. <laughs> I spaced out the days incorrectly, but luckily I have the colored papers to the rescue. I happen to have this terracotta color, so I cut a strip to cover it, and this time I made sure to space it out correctly. <laughs> Now let's do another painting here. I am doing a cup of pumpkin spiced latte and a pumpkin cookie. I forgot to mention but this theme is just all about a cozy fall or autumn. Most of the illustrations are different from one another but I just want to rather convey the atmosphere of coziness in this whole setup. So these are some of the things that remind me of a cozy feeling. If you guys remember, I painted a pumpkin spiced latte in my October plan with me video last year. I will link the video on the description if you haven't seen that yet. I hope you can see the improvement in my painting today. Though I was still doubting with the whipped cream and the drizzle, I was looking constantly at my reference photo. I will also list my references from Unsplash in the video description, by the way, if you would like to practice or refer to them for your paintings as well. But so far, I'm happy that I'm able to paint with ease now from years of practice and experimenting. One of them is learning to be detail-oriented or recognizing where to add dimension, the shadows, and the highlights, and those little details, which we can also call the icing on top of the cake or of the painting. I'm still relying on image references because that is just the best way for me to learn by looking at the photo intently and studying it as I paint. Surely there are still some areas that I miss sometimes, but yeah, I'm happy with it right now. So we have a cup of pumpkin spice latte and then a pumpkin cookie. Underneath, I also painted a folded napkin all the way to the edges of the calendar and an autumn leaf on the right side. Then I'm writing the abbreviation of November slightly on top of the napkin, 
This time I'm using the Tombow Fudenosuke brush pen because it's easier and faster to shade the letters. Onto the right side of the spread, we will be setting up my goals and focus section. I'm using the same colored papers, green and terracotta for my goals and focus boxes respectively. I also cut out small oatmeal colored paper boxes for the titles. Again, you can use brush pens as an alternative for these colored papers. Above these is a notes section. I'm using the fine tip of the Tombow brush pen in sand and drew this grid pattern box. Then I wrote the notes title in a brush lettering on the top left. I also added drop shadows to these boxes with the Sakura Koi gray brush pen. The fourth color in my fall printouts is another shade of green. I looked up what shade close to it is called and I found it's called T. I ripped some of them too and glued on the corners. And lastly is adding this scribble design washi tape on top of them and on the other corners of the spread. And that's it for this one. I like the airy look of it but still has some interesting elements. I think this layout also gave a great balance to both sides of the spread. Moving on to the next spread will be my habit and mood trackers. I'm writing the titles first with the same font. I will be doing a horizontal layout again like last month. I'm using colored pens to draw the habit trackers, the zebra mild liner in mild beige, and the fine tip of sand tombow brush pen. I thought the fine tip of the sand tombow is as dark as the brush tip of it, so it looked like they are just the same shade here. <laughs> Anyway, I just drew six simple grid boxes. Then for the mood trackers, this idea came to mind last minute and it is to draw a check pattern. It reminds me of a checkered sweater. I am using four main colors and I'm drawing the boxes of the same color diagonally, totaling to 30 boxes. I also saw this cute mood tracker idea from T and Bujo where I have these icons indicating my moods and I will just doodle them on each of the boxes. We have a bit of space left here so we'll just do a little illustration to go with this spread. I wanted to paint a window decorated with different kinds of leaves taped on it. I started painting the glass window with bullery trees. I loaded my brush with this beigey color and painted the top part for the sky. Then I added yellow and green as I go down and blending them. The consistency of the base is watery for this purpose, but I added more pigment to the bottom for the second layer. And then I'm using a small filbert brush this time. And from that pigmented area, I just gently dragged and tapped some of it upwards, creating a textured gradient. I also took a bit of white to smooth it out a bit. Once it's dry, I then painted several leaves that are taped on the window. I left the bottom part for a little phrase that says all the autumn feels with a white gel pen and repainted it with white gouache on top to make it more visible. 
So I wanted to paint a window frame. I think it looks good without it so I skipped it in the end when I removed the washi tapes. This is definitely an easy painting here but after that I drew a border around with a black pen and glued another ripped paper to complete the whole spread. I love the simplicity of this layout and I'm looking forward to filling these trackers. Next on our setup is our content list. I just wrote the title again here and added the same strip of paper from the calendar under it. I decided to do a very simple layout for this page as well. There is a little linear tracker of my social handles, two of these green papers where I will be listing down video and post ideas for YouTube and Instagram, and then a grid pattern box below for my to-do list. I also added great drop shadows on these boxes. Then on the next page, I'm including a similar page from my October setup where I can list down some activities I want to do to enjoy a cozy month of November. Since the title is quite long, I decided to write it in two different fonts, slab serif in the beginning and then brush lettering for the cozy November. I decorated the corners of the spread with the scribble washi tape and ripped colored papers. I've used this washi tape many times in my setups before because the design can go along with any theme and this is a nice way to add design on your pages if you want to do something quick while still achieving minimal layouts on your setup. I wanted to do one more simple painting in this upper section on the activity list. The image is a stack of comfy sweaters or cardigans. I painted the background with a solid cream color first and the base of the sweaters with gray, honey yellow, warm red, white, and brown. I also painted some maple leaves in between. Then with dark brown, I painted the folds of the sweaters and defined the shadows. And we'll just continue building them up by adding lighter shadows to create dimension. Lastly will be the patterns and just like we did in the cover page, we are painting the lines following the form of the sweaters. You can also do other patterns for more variation, but that's it for this painting. I just glued the ripped paper on top to match the bottom decor and we can finally move on to the last part which is my November weekly spreads. I skipped a couple pages for now, but first, let's paint the biggest painting in this entire setup. I'm also going to apologize already because I was running out of memory storage filming this part, so I have only a few footages available to show in this painting process. I tried deleting unnecessary ones, but I also captured as much of it as I could and I hope you will get the idea since a lot of the elements and the techniques from the previous paintings are still incorporated and applied in the whole composition except for the window frame, wooden coaster, and the open book. So this whole image is a cozy window corner with a candle on top of a book. I started with the blurry window background again. The same technique is used as we did from the habit and mood trackers spread illustration, but I added more autumnal colors to the blurry trees or leaves such as yellows and rusty reds and blended them towards the center while also creating textures. And then I painted the window frame that is visible on the center of the image.
And next are the stacks of warm red, yellow, and brown sweaters on the right corner. I waited for that to dry so I moved on to paint the base of the cloth, wooden coaster, maple leaf, and the book. Most of the time, I paint from element to element. Sometimes I try to paint the background first and then the foreground or vice versa or paint the base and then details immediately after or base for the most part of the illustration and then the details. So this is the part where I didn't get footage on how I painted the sweater cloth and maple leaf details but like I said the techniques were similar to the first paintings. Now we are focusing on the open book and its pages. I painted them with light cream color and then the book cover with dark green. The light is coming from the left side and so will be the highlights. I painted the shadows on the inside of the bent page and on the areas where there is no light hitting or reflecting. Then I just scribbled the writings on the book pages. And this time we are painting a real burning candle compared to the one we did from the cover. Painting the jar is also just the same process but for this the angle is we can actually see the upper part or the wax then we are also painting the burning light. I wanted to make it semi-realistic too. I painted the base of the flame with white first and then adding bright yellow to the wax surface and around the flame leaving a bit of white on the center. I added the reflections of the light or flame around the rim of the jar and finally is the label by just writing warm and cozy with a black pen. And that finishes this whole painting, but on the left corner, I'm writing a mini calendar for November. Then I'm going to explain how I made the weekly layout itself since I also didn't get to film those. So again, sorry for that. But what I did next is I cut these sides of the painting vertically. I counted 9 dot spaces for these. I did the same cutout from the pages we skipped earlier and a couple more on the other side so they become Dutch doors. I was able to do the first weeks here. On the first week, I only used the Zebra My Liners and a black fine liner to create the dailies. On the second week, I added some square colored papers where I will be writing the dates later on. And yeah, at last we are done with my whole November setup. If you would like to see the rest of the weeklies, I will be posting pictures or maybe a reel of the before pen flip through over my Instagram account. So follow me there too if you're on Instagram. Also, don't forget to subscribe here on my YouTube channel if you haven't already. But that's it for my November plan with me video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Have a cozy and warm month of November and I will see you in my next one. Bye everyone!